there is a lot of information, by the way, too. And so, and I'm, my intention is to take you on a journey. Um, and so you understand the water cycle and its complexity. Um, then I want to take you to sort of the urgency and some, some of the things that they're talking about as solutions and probably not. But also then looking at solutions and what people are doing and how, um, yeah, what they are doing and, and how effective it is. And it's all based on natural cycles and natural systems. So it's not about man-made stuff, it's about nature doing her job. Okay, so the water cycle and climate change. So, so I'm gonna start off doing the key processes of the water cycle. Now, I love this picture. I love this picture. Because on this picture you see, this is part of the water cycle here, working, effective. And they're only little water droplets, but they are so important to um, how the land functions and how the land works. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, I love this picture because, and I'm going to talk about this in a moment. This little this little water cycle of the the droplets. Okay. okay. So this is the macro part. Okay. This is macro. So when we we can see here, can everybody see the words? Probably not, yeah? So here is collection, collection, evaporation, evaporation, okay? And then you have condensation, which is a little droplets on that, on that little um, leaf. And then we have precipitation, yeva, see? So this is macro. Okay, this is the big, so we, I guess we know the, the rivers and the lakes are the collection where the rain comes down and collects in the river, in the lakes, in the glacial lakes and the sea, yeah? And then the heat comes, it's warm, the water evaporates and then it connects and condenses into clouds. Yeah, and then the clouds get big, they come together, and then they rain. And then we come to the precipitation, and then we have the collection again. Yeah, it's, that's pretty basic, huh? Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is just get the camera and focus it a little bit more on the specifics of those cycles. But, okay. So this is really important, huh? This, this, is, this, is, um, this is how we see the broken water cycle and what we are feeling today, what we're experiencing now, okay? But there are two water cycles, two, huh? And the main one, the really, really important one is this one the small water cycle, yeah? The small water cycle is the boss, is the hefe or hefa of the land, yeah? And we have the large water cycle. And the, the small water cycle works in the landscape, small. So what the small water cycle does, involved in the water cycle, is evaporation, evaporation, evapotranspiration. What that is, is plants sweat. And what they do is when they get hot, they get water from the ground, it goes through them and comes out of their leaves. Okay, that's one way we lose water. But if we have a healthy water cycle, that will come back down and go back into the ground. If it's not healthy, that water goes into the atmosphere. See? Condensation. 
Now some people say, some people say, this is the most important part of the water cycle. Why do you think? Por qué? The condensation is this, rain. Without condensation, we have no rain. If there's no condensation, there is no rain. Vale, sí. No, que bien. No, it's good. It's good. If, if, if there's something that you don't get or if I speak too fast, please tell me because I really want you to um, get, uh, gather the information, see? ¿sí? Um, so condensation is really important. Also, in the morning and in the evening, what happens? The condensation comes down on the plant, yeah? The water, the, the atmospheric moisture, comes onto the plant, goes down the plant, and goes into the soil, or goes into the ground. See, the morning dew, the afternoon dew. It's only a little cycle, we don't think about. But really key for the health of the landscape and the landscape function. See? Precipitation, small rain. The small rain, that's the heifer, huh? The small rain, because that allows the cycle to function, see? Infiltration, really, really important. Why is it really important? So we have the small cycle going onto the ground and sinking in the ground and under the ground. I'll show you a picture later how important that is. But if we look at Spain or Australia, we're looking in Spain context, a lot of the agriculture, guess what? Is using the water from underground. And guess what? A lot of that water reserve now is here. And some farms are using saline water or salt water because all that fresh water is, is gone, see? And then we have freezing, melting, see? But that's the small water cycle. And what we have here is the large water cycle. And the large water cycle is the ocean and the seas, the Mediterranean, the Atlantic or Pacific, or the, the, the big, big water. And the, the evaporation comes from the sea. And because the sea is so big, yeah, it's a big amounts of water, big clouds. And that comes over to the land and then boom, big rain, big rain, yeah? And what happens when we have big rain? We have floods, we have erosion, and we have mudslides, we have these problems. But with the small water cycle, it manages that. It stops that stuff from happening, which I'll explain a bit later. Okay. See, but you can see how important it is, just we're just seeing at the start. See, and, um, and so we have the large water cycle, the big rain events, and the heifer, the small rain. See, give me a check. Vale, so the aquifer. Now there's a couple of things I want you to look at, see? There, um, so the rain comes down, goes into the stream, and then this is like a sponge. There are some underwater lakes, huh? But mainly an aquifer is like a sponge. And then we have the, the, the aquifer that's at the top. Okay, so then you'll have bedrock and more bedrock. The top aquifer, where we get a lot of our water, can fill up quickly within a week sometimes, a day, a month. <coughs> but then we have two other aquifers, okay? 
Can anybody read that? Yes. Años. Years. Can anyone read that? Centuries. Centuries. And guess where we're getting our water from? A lot of places now are getting water from where? From here. See? See? So this is problem, huh? Because the water that takes centuries is being taken up and used for agriculture, unfortunately. Yeah? And so we're finding in Spain a lot of farmers now, their well that was once full of water is now dropping to levels they've never seen. Yeah? So you can see how important the aquifer is there. Eh? Okay. So this picture, I just wanted to show if we take away the heifer, we take away the boss, the small water cycle, all we have is a large water cycle. Yeah? And when we have the large water cycle, we have these massive rain events like we had, we had been having sometimes. These, we had a nice, beautiful rain event a month ago. See? But how often? But when do we have those big rain events? They're happening more. And when those big rain events come, we don't get to capture that water. It runs straight in the ocean or straight in the sea in Mataró or in Spain. And what happens? This, this is Spain, 2019. Big rain event, flash flood. Can we see the color of that water? It's brown. Why? Erosion, soil, tierra. Tierra is in the water. So that water that was from the mountains, from the ground, is going into the river, out to the sea. So we've lost all that water. See? Okay, so these big rain events. So the, the small water cycles, the, the manager, the boss, the heifer. So if anything, just take that in, away. From this talk tonight, the small water cycle is the boss. See? Um, large downpours, they create flash flooding, huh? Topsoil loss, erosion, and mudslides, because there's nothing stopping it. There's nothing helping that, managing that cycle. Nothing on the ground, which I'll show you later. And the system breakdown, so then we, when all this happens, further on, we have this word. Now this word is important, especially for Spain and Australia, huh? And Australia is desertification. Desert, creating desert. Basically means, crece con desierta. See? And that's, that's the, the big thing. So, entiendas. So, does this area here, the fertile crescent, conoces Mesopotamia, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, was once known as the fertile crescent. That's what it looks like now. There are farms there at the moment. Do you know how I said about the aquifer? You know where they're getting their water from? That aquifer, those aquifers that take centuries to, um, to fill. Yeah, but now because desertification happens because of mismanagement of landscape, mismanagement from us. 
Of course, claro, there is climatic changes that happen over time. And I can, we can talk about that at another time, okay? There are deserts that happen due to climatic situations of landscape, of, of, of um, cycles that happen. But they take, they take anything from 500 to 1,000 years to happen. Those things that happen where the, the ice ages and stuff, they took to happen. To get to that final stage is 500 years to 1,000 sometimes. We're doing this, and we'll go in a bit later. So the next, the next slide, this is our lifetime. This is Spain. This is Almeria. Okay. And I can show you many photos like this of Australia too. And not where it was once desert, where it is a desert now because of mismanagement. See? So, like, um, sorry. So, these, these are scientific terminology, huh? This is like, this is terminology. This is not, I make this up, this is my words, no. This is terminology. Vale? So, des desertification is linked to unsustainable water management. Land use practices, unsustainable un land use practices. How, we, how our relationship is with the land. And this, can we see any grass? Can we see any trees? Can we see any soil? It's bare, it's bare, isn't it? Huh? And this is, this is the problem. So when we have these big, big rain events, all the soil gets whoom, washed away. And then this process starts happening and starts growing because there's no way to hold that water in the ground and to keep that life force in the ground. Another thing, another thing, this is really important. Water, <laughs> this is interesting, huh? Like we talk about blood and we check our pulse and our blood pressure. Water needs to pulse. It needs to move. It needs to have a pulse. Otherwise, what happens? When you see water and it's just sitting in a, in a puddle for ages and ages, what happens to it? It, yeah, it's stagnant, becomes like sick. Water needs to move. It needs to go in the ground, move. It moves. It's constantly moving. And you hold that water, and then that water becomes sick. Interesting, huh? And that's not being energetic, spiritual. That's just... That's just it. So, this is Spain, huh? This is Spain. It is the fourth main exporter of agribusiness, of agriculture, of food in Europe. The fourth. Hmm? Pretty big, huh? For the whole of Europe. See? And this, they're ranked 10th, the F, of the world, El Mundo. Vale? So it's huge. So you think of all the food that's grown in Spain. It's going, other, other, it's going to other places. Okay? So it's a bit of a problem. A lot of people making good money from that. <laughs> I don't think it gets to the local community, but that's another thing. Okay, but it's overshadowed by drought. What are we going through? Drought. Desertification. See? Water shortages. Huh? <laughs> really? Flash flooding. Ooh. 
and loss of topsoil and erosion. And I've repeated those words a bit, but it's important that you understand the, the effect of that. See? Right. Okay. This is a scary one. And we're going to get into happy stuff soon, huh? <laughs> okay. But this is scary, okay? So I've, um, I'm working with some scientists from Slovakia and they developed this accounting of water. So what they did was uh, account all the water reserves, including moisture in the, in the soil, the moisture in the air, the, the, the lakes around the world, the glaciers around the world, and they put it into a percentage of 100%. Entiendas? Yep. Yep. So the ocean and the seas, 97% of all the water in the world is in the ocean. 97%. Yeah? Groundwater. Now, look at that figure. 0.68% of all the water in the world, of groundwater in the world. Lakes. Can you see that figure? 0 0.01. 0 0.01. Vale? So, rio, rio, rios, 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 ¿sí? Vale? 0.0001. I think, pienso es, es, I think that really gives us, um, then, there's more soil moisture than there is rivers. <laughs> uh, in la agua, in la tierra, soil moisture is mass soil moisture. Is mass. Sí. Sí. ¿Entiendes? So it's pretty, it's serious, huh? So this is, this is like a conversation we need to talk about. Yeah, I, th I think so. Vale, merci. So, <laughs> I've heard there's a lot of talk about desalination, vale? There's 97% of all the water in the world. So, who thinks desalination's a good idea? It's good, see? Más o menos? Sí, no, cool, cool. No, no. As a, as a help. As a help. Not as a main source. Not as a main source, okay? But, next one. Okay, so, can, oh. can you see that? Okay. So here are the desalination plants in Spain already. Okay, now I want you to look at this, especially the parablas in rojo, the, the words in red. Vale. So in Spain there are currently more than 700 desalination plants in Spain now. Ahora. Okay, now. Eight million people. They feed. They have enough water for eight million people. How many people in Spain now? Forty-seven million. Vale. Okay. So people will say, but there's there's dams. There's there's full dams in parts. So. 
as a main water source, as a main water source, no. Vale? The numbers don't add. They don't explain to you these numbers. You have to search for these numbers for them to give them to you. Vale? So, a lot of people make a lot of money from them, from the energy consumption. Because they use a lot of energy to, to, to do, to, do the, to, de, to desalinize the water. Yeah? But, um, and they're using, they're going to use nuclear. They can use seawater for the cooling process of nuclear. I don't know. I, I think nuclear is too risky. That's my opinion. Look, that's my opinion. Vale? But um, does that make sense? Like, does that sort of change our, our viewpoint of desalination? Because it... Yeah, as, as a source of, of emergency, yes, of course, great. But as a main source of, of, of a water supply for the community, 700, 8 million. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty inefficient, in my opinion. Okay, for me, this is a beautiful picture. So I've been to this farm. I didn't see this. I saw this. But that was what it looked like. That is what it looks like now. But it's working with natural systems. And when you work with the natural system, it doesn't take long. Like it takes sometimes months, weeks, um, small amount of years to make a massive transition. Yeah, but, um, but you have to do the work sometimes. It's not, yeah, it depends on this. You've got to look at the context. Um, but you're looking at this as, I use the term loosely, ecological water management. There's, there's a whole different ways you can do it. This, what, we, what is done here, is a technique called natural sequence farming, made by, developed by a gentleman. Some people wouldn't say that, but his name was Peter Andrews. Um, and he's a bit of a, a rough old, what we'd say in Australia, a, cow, a, a rough cow cocky. Um, but, he, um, but his knowledge is immense, is incredible. Um, I learnt from him as well. So you can see the difference. Huh? Um, and this is really important, this one. Okay, this, this light here, sorry, I'm hopping around a bit. <laughs> <laughs> this light here, who's, who's heard about soil and save the soil and, and the soil, yeah? Pip, tierra, save the soil, yeah? Okay. Which is good, that's good, that's good, yeah? But soil is a byproduct. Soil is created by plants. Okay. This graph has nothing to do with water. It only has to do with soil. But I want you to look at the relationship. The relationship of the cycle. Okay. It's not just so you have water on rock. Water, rock, and then you have moss, lichen, different plants that 
start breaking down fungi, breaking down the rock, yeah? And then you have little plants grow. Those plants do a job. Those roots, they send down energy. They send down uh, uh, energy and carbon from the atmosphere, which feeds all the life in the ground. Then you have little soil starting to be created. Then you have more soil, more soil. The, the bigger the plant, the deeper the soil. See? And this is a meadow of all different types of plants. Capturing energy from the sun, putting that into the ground. When it rains, the water goes into the ground, comes up through the leaf, and then it drops back down into the ground with the dew from the atmosphere and keeps going in a nice little circle. See? Hmm. It's, um, so they manage, they, they help the water cycle, they help the helpers of the water cycle. Without the plants, it's, it, the, the, the water cycle doesn't survive. It doesn't, doesn't work. But, okay, so read this statement. Can everybody read this statement? Green plants sequester carbon, feed the soil. Brown plants don't. Okay. So when we have like winter and the trees, they, they, they go brown. They don't sequester any carbon. Nothing happens. But green plants sequester carbon all the time and they bring the carbon down into the soil. And if we want to sequester carbon, the more green plants we have, guess what? We talk about carbon, guess where that carbon goes? In the soil. In the end days? So this is, this is a, my friend's farm in Australia. It's what they call a maca farm a macadamia farm. And what he's done, he's, he's actually put in seeds to grow all different types of plants in the middle of the rows to get energy and goodness into the ground. And that's one thing about trees is that there's a lot of carbon in there, but it's not doing anything. The, the, the grass is bringing the carbon into the soil. It does a more efficient job. It's still a very important job, but that's, in, that's an important job too, the relationship. In the end days? Vale. Okay. So this is, this is the stuff. Okay. People are doing. Traditional and local knowledge is paramount. This is like the, the, the traditional knowledge of Spain is huge and the agriculture in Spain was wonderful. The agriculture in Australia by the First Nations, the Aboriginal people, they had an amazing agricultural system, but that was broken by Whitefella when they came. But um, Spain had an amazing tr uh, traditional agricultural system. Um, natural sequence farming, you saw what that's doing. It's regenerating, it's replacing, it's rejuvenating all these cycles. Agroforestry, another one, um, which is traditional. It's been going for thousands of years. Uh, holistic grazing. This is an example of holistic grazing. This one, no. This one is conventional conventional agriculture with animals. This is holistic grazing. Completely different. Completely different. Yeah? And agroecology, regenerative agriculture, which is a big term. It doesn't mean, it just means working with nature. <laughs> 
and permaculture. That's another, another term. It's just design, but yeah. But traditional local knowledge. This is Spain, huh? This is terracing in Spain. Green trees, terracing. So when it rains, the rain keeps, stays on the ground. It goes on the ground, in the ground, under the ground. It doesn't go off the ground and into the ocean or the sea. See? This is Spain. This is Thailand. Terracing. <laughs> you know, that's what they were doing. Were they doing it to support the small water cycle? No. But they were doing it because it was efficient. It was, it was storing water in the ground. It was an efficient way of growing food. But it was working with the natural system, working with the natural cycle. But, okay. So keeping water in, on, and under the ground. That's what we need to do. And by doing that, we're going to support the, the small water cycle. And here you can see, this is outside, you can see these little rocks. There's a term there called leaky weirs. And what that does is hold the water. The water still can keep moving, but stays in the ground. And guess what's there? Grass, plants starting that cycle you know um, and this was a gully I've been here as well um, it, it's amazing like I've done some projects and it, how it just quickly it just changes you know but this is a, like a leaky weir dam and that is now flooding with water but that was in a gully where there was no water but it's amazing the transition. Right. Okay. So, what can I do? What can we do as individuals? We all don't have a farm. We're all not going to go out and build a swale and or build a contour and build leaky weirs in the, in the forest or whatever. But what we can do is support our local farmer. It's keeping the food here. It's keeping the food here. It's keeping the water here. It's keeping the nutrient here. And it's keeping, it's supporting our local farmers. You know? Um, support local agriculture. If you can't buy it here, buy it in Spain. Make sure it's Spanish grown. Keeps everything here. Not exporting it off where we lose it. We lose that water. The water that grows that tomato goes over to England that water to grow that tomato is in England now it might sound silly but we're the tenth Spain is the tenth biggest in the world um, become a plant and water advocate <laughs> when you see plants say thanks you know, <laughs> you know no matter what they are if they're a burr, if they're a marshmallow, if they're a mallow, if they're a, you know, a grass. G'day, mate. Thank you. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, become a part of a project that supports natural systems. Look at projects around and become a part of that. You know, see what's around. There's... Um, uh, plant a forest project. There's lots of projects, I know there's lots in Finland, that will actually just plant forests and just leave it. And that's, that's, my for that's the forest I'm supporting. You know, we can do that here in Spain, we can do that in Australia, we can do that. And support those projects where we're just building a forest. Not just trees, shrubs, plants, grass, all the different structures and cycles and the relationships. Because it's relationships. It's not just a tree's going to save the world. I'll quickly talk this story. A tree will die from a broken heart. True story. Trees will die from a broken heart. 
And I've seen that in Australia, if you're driving through the, through the country, you'll see a tree on its own and generally it would have died and you're seeing the skeleton of the tree. Then you'll see a tree and it will have a shrub, it will have another tree, it will have, the, have a little bit of this and a little bit of that around there and that tree will be healthy. But it's not alone, it's got its relationships, it's got shrubs, it's got animals, animals and insects and stuff that interact with it. But a tree on its own, it's on its own. So if there's any insects or any thing, there's nothing there to, to help it. And it dies lonely, lonely, it dies lonely. You know, so this is where, when we're looking at forests and we're planting forests, it's not just planting trees. What else goes with it? And that's where agroforestry comes in or permaculture and stuff like that. It comes in, we're looking at the relationships of things. Um, rally the government to protect the water and nature, not rely on desalination. Why? Why are we in this situation? Because of the broken water cycle. Yep, thanks. So this one, if I can give you this slide if you want. There's some projects that are happening here. So this, this gentleman here, he is a biodynamic gentleman. He, does, he grows stuff biodynamically. Amazing man. He's in Catalonia, just in Arenas del Mar, or Arenas del Mont. Uh, Magdalena Ruth, she's working on a project in Peru and she's developing an agroforestry project in Catalonia, in Mataró. You know, and these people, like, they're driven, they're, they're strong, you know. Um, Ivo Deng, he's, uh, he's climate farmers, that's Europe, but he's based in Catalonia and he's setting up his own system just outside of um, Barcelona. So they're regenerative guys, huh? They're regenerative. And this gentleman here, or couple, Carlo and Coralie, they have an uh, agroforestry project in Tarragona. And they're all doing it in restoring natural system. Mikhail Kravicic, and Peter Andrews, Adam Wilson and Stuart Andrews, Australia, Slovakia, they are specific water people. I've learned so much from them. Unbelievable. <coughs> like I look at the landscape and like later, I, I'm going back to Australia in a few, in next month. But when I come back, if you want to, we can go for a walk. And we'll just go for a walk. And we can go for a walk here. And there's a story. There is a story, the land is talking. And if we just look and we can see a plant here and we can see the plant there, it's all doing something. And they have, they, there's a relationship there with the water, with the soil, why, with the sun, and how it's working to rejuvenate and heal that little piece of the land and doing their little bit of the job. Uh, yeah, so Peter Andrews, Natural Sequence Farming, their website, so you can actually read about this yourself. So everything I'm talking about now, you can just read for it yourself, if, if you're interested, just to look at. And you can see the different projects, you can get involved, you can see other projects that are happening. Yeah? Okay, next slide. Okay, this is Spain. This is taken from a dolmen, just south of here. Incredible. And you see this, there's a dolmen just here. Just here. And from around, this is where the, and you can just see the, I oh, think this is beautiful, hey? You know, it's like the relationship, yeah? Um, take our messages, if you would take our anything. Yeah, we're experiencing le significant levels. We don't, you don't need to take that home anyway, because like, we already know that, hey, you know? Um, water is in fact has become the fast, like it's become a fast declining resource. And you can see that, that table was how much we have, it's not, we got, right, we got water all the time. We're running out of it. And that cycle has to replenish again before us to get that water back. We can talk about carbon. Yeah, that's cool. Cool. But what about the water and the plants that sequester that carbon and the water that supports the whole system? Um, we can reverse the trend though. We can do it and people are doing it. They're doing it all over the world. 
by working with natural systems. And working with natural cycles and systems can help restore the water cycle and manage the climate crisis. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>